Chapter 5, Small Business, Entrepreneurship, and Franchises. So as you're probably aware, or maybe maybe not aware, um, small businesses really are the backbone of our economy. Um, and as you can see, um, many workers and many non-traditional workers are hired by small firms. And by small firms, we mean, mean like 500 employees or less, a firm that's not dominant in its industry. Um, as you might have gotten the idea from the previous chapter, in the United States, it is quite easy and quite quick to set up a small business, especially if you're setting up as a sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorships, or I should say small businesses, tend to be clustered in um, certain industries, in distribution, service, and promotion. And that's probably not surprising because they're going small businesses cluster in areas that have fairly low barriers to entry. So if you're thinking that you might want to start a business, then there, there's some pretty decent quizzes on the internet, you know, are you the entrepreneurial type? Um, do you have what it takes to start a small business? And these are some of the characteristics of folks that start a small business. Um, why do you think the ages tend to cluster around early 30s? When I asked the face-to-face -face class that, they said, well, you know, it makes sense that at that point, people would have the financial wherewithal to start their own businesses. Um, I think there probably is something to that. You know what a good source of information on women and minority small businesses? That's the SBA or Small Business Administration. And I'll include a link for the SBA because it's such a fantastic resource. <clears throat> Why do small businesses f fail? Well, in, in my experience, um, most of it is cash flow problems. So part of this chapter talks about writing the business plan. And when you do your pro forma financial statements and when you do your budget, I would suggest that you at least think about doubling your cost projections because oftentimes they do tend to be higher and more often than not businesses just run out of money. Uh, and in fact, even in businesses that succeed, it is not unusual at all to take a year or two to reach what's called the break even point. Um, and that is when the business moves from the red to the black, when they start actually making a profit, when their revenue exceeds the expenses. Prior to that, in terms of startup, it's not unusual initially for expenses to exceed revenue. Um, and I said a minute ago that <clears throat> small businesses really are the backbone of the economy, both in terms of employment and in terms of innovation. This is really interesting to me, looking at all the innovations that came out of small businesses. So because they are so, small businesses are so important to our economy, that's why there is that assistance available through the Small Business Administration, through the business centers, um, because they are very, very beneficial to the economy, to society. Um, in terms of benefits to the business itself, the fact that a small business, you know, if you look around us, if you look around the campus, there are a number of kind of, mo you know, within walking distance, some mom and pop shops, um, Especially if you're, you know, if you're going out for lunch or a cup of coffee, if you walk down the street, you'll run into those. And the advantage of those is they can really establish a personal relationship with their customers. A um, couple of other advantages is, you know, much like a small boat can turn very rapidly, whereas a large ship cannot, a small business can react more rapidly to change. And that's part of the reason why we see innovations coming out of smaller, a lot of times coming out of smaller businesses, because they can react quickly. So here are some of the advantages. Um, <clears throat> the disadvantages may be obvious that there's a higher rate of failure. And by limited potential, that means that if, you know, if you're going to have significant potential, you'd have to be able to scale up. Okay. So I mentioned the SBA. That would be one of the places to look for funding after you've exhausted the sources that you see in front of you. 
Um, the SBA is really, really useful um, in terms of sources of funding. You might also consider um, angels. Um, the importance of the business plan really cannot be understated. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. If you are going to an angel investor or some other type of investor, a bank, they're going to demand that, that at a minimum to show that you've got some wherewithal, that you're going to pay the loan back and stay in business. So as a communication to a potential lender, the business plan is really important. It's also important for you just as kind of a roadmap you know, where are you going? How do you measure if you're getting where you need to go if you haven't written that down ahead of time? Um, and it's also helpful to put things on paper so that you can kind of see if your if your goals are attainable and see if it makes sense. And really, it really forces you to think through some things rather than just having some sort of pie in the sky ideas. So um, I'm including some really good links on how to write the business plan and some model business plans. At a minimum, this is what should be included in the business plan. And the interesting thing is the executive summary, although it's listed pretty much towards the beginning here, that would be written after everything else. So after you write the rest of the business plan, um, your market analysis, your marketing plan, your financials, etc., etc., etc. Then you would write the executive summary, um, kind of with the highlights. And the executive summary is the first thing that a potential lender will read. And if it's not compelling, it doesn't grab them and convince them, they won't read further. So it's really important to make that compelling and credible. <clears throat> Um, I think this is fairly straightforward. One of two, a couple of areas I want to highlight. Um, and at the risk of repeating myself, I've mentioned this before. Like I mentioned this in the previous chapter. But it's important to have an exit strategy. Uh, and that's not being a pessimist, that's being a realist. Because chances are you won't be doing this your entire life. So especially if you have some form of a partner, it's important to say, hey, you know, what happens? What's the next step after this? You know, how do we divide assets, etc.? cetera? Um, another really important area that often gets overlooked is the what if. You know, what if Walmart comes to town and we can no longer compete? Then what? So some contingency planning is really, really important. Okay. So moving on, um, as I said, I'm including the link on the SBA, and I would encourage you to explore that to see what is available. Another option that you might consider is SCORE or Service Corps of Retired Executives, and that is exactly what, this, what the name sounds like. These were folks that were successful in their careers, and they retired, and they got tired of playing golf. So they said, you know what, for free, I will counsel um, up-and-coming entrepreneurs. Uh, and I, way back in the day, I did um, ask the SCORE folks for some advice, and, and it was okay. You know, some folks have said it was really, really useful. I thought, it, I thought it was okay. So your mileage may vary, but it is certainly worth checking out. You know, it, it never hurts to have another set of eyes on your business plan, another set of opinions. So the SBDC, our Small Business Development Center, is an a sister institution that we have here as part of Long Beach City College. So if you're looking for assistance in starting or growing your business, you might start there first. And moving on, this is a little bit of detail. Um, SBA is useful not only as a source of information and guidance, but also as a source of funding, as a source of loans. So, as, as I said before, I would really start with them first to see what they have available.